Hello, good people. Welcome to the Safe Happy Life channel with me, Dr. Rose M. Today we are uncovering what we have covered with the carpets. Are you a parent to a 25 to 30 year old? Are you between 45 and 55 years of age? This is our city because we are going to talk about our children uh, and we shall decide whether we have children or parent consuming vampires, predators, killers, name it. And I will divide us as parents into two categories with reasons. One, the happy and fulfilled parent. Two, the disappointed and disillusioned parent. And remember, these two categories might be found in one person or in one parent who is happy and fulfilled with by one child and who is disappointed and disillusioned by another. Let us start with the positive. The happy and fulfilled parent is happy because the daughter or son is done with courage, has got a job and some form of occupation, has left the nest and keeps visiting the parents, calls the parents even if it's just to greet them, has, or, her or his close friends are known to the parents, the plans and their plans, they already have plans for further education. They protect the family wealth. They're easy to track wherever they are. They don't hide their whereabouts. They are respectful and helpful around the home. They are listening and to the parents. They listen and take advice. They do no drugs. No cannabis, no, no alcohol, no other drugs. They are not drug doers. Then they keep out of trouble. You'll not find them in trouble with the police or with the neighbors or with age mates. They are not violent and they are patient to wait for what they are working for. They earn honest living. These are the qualities of uh, a child that every parent would want to have, particularly at the age of 25 to 30 years. However, however, this is not always the case. There are those of us who are disappointed and disillusioned because our daughters and sons have these categories that I'm going to list down. They have been in, in and out of college for the last eight years. They are college hoppers. They are course hoppers from this course to the other course, never finishing this college to the other college, wasting the parents' money. They do not have a stable job up to now. They talk of hassles, and these hassles are nothing a parent would want to be associated with. Many times, drug peddling. Sometimes they could be pickpockets, the village thieves. Number three, they still live with their parents. They are a fountain of stress for the parents. And they refuse to take parents' calls wherever they call and parents, and they do not want to take the parents' call. And they call to con parents that mom, dad have been caught or have been arrested. Please send so much money to this number because I need to bribe the cop to get my way out. Their friends, their very close friends, are not known to you or to me as a parent. They, are, they talk of further education, which remains a mirage, a distant wish. After all, we already say they have not even finished the first degree or diploma, the first phase of college uh, education is still to be finished. They sell or give out family items or even personal items to friends. They destroy homes. 
they are secretive about their movements and they keep very late hours. They do late morning hours. They, they, they are people you wish you would not have them in your house. They are highly, highly disrespectful. You wonder, how can a child who was born the other day by you who is 30 years, I mean, who is, who is 50 years, and they are only 26 years or 25, and they have the audacity to answer you back rudely. They lack help, uh, helping in hard initiatives. You will not find them telling themselves, I can do this at home, I can do this in the house. They're just there. They, they listen and they are controlled by their friends. They do weed. They call it weed. They call, call it cannabis, call it bangi, whatever, and other drugs. And they tend to be dirty and untidy from the person to where they sleep. They attract trouble. trouble. They are like magnets of trouble. Whether it's pregnancy, they fall pregnant left, right, and center. They do abortions. They are arrested by police. They are in fights with the peers and other people in the community. They are even subjected to mob justice sometimes. They are violent. They can kill or fight siblings who they feel like they are favored more than them. They demand, they are demanding. They want to demand cars, the parents' cars, the title deeds, the house keys, inheritance at 25 years, imagine. So, dear parents, this is the talk for and with disappointed and illusioned parents. We need to have a reality check. Parents have been killed by their children. We read about it all the time in the newspapers, on TV, in social media, where young men are asking for land. They are telling their mothers, vacate this plot because I need it. Where is the, the title deed of plot X, of house B? Where is the house rent that you collected from house X? Parents have been driven into depression, dementia, high blood pressure, high blood sugar by their own children. Remember, I am talking about middle-aged parents. These are parents who are 45 to 55 and possibly up to 60 years, but mostly 45 to 55 years. Mid-age, middle-aged parents who should be energetic and now preparing for retirement. But see what children are picking them through. Depression, anxiety, dementia, high blood pressure, blood sugar. Parents cannot sleep at night because they are afraid of their own children. Children like mothers, we breast, you give birth to. Took care of those nurturing little things that the little kid could not do for himself or herself. You put them to your breast. You suckled them with your own milk and they are here. You cannot sleep because you are afraid of your own son. You are afraid of your own daughter. Children have run amok and broken glass pins in their parents' homes, destroyed parents' homes, destroyed parents' vehicles. Children have walked away and cut communication with their with the family. I wish this is what they would do instead of bringing stress to the parent and being seen uh, doing the wrong things, breaking homes, breaking everything in the family and demanding this and the other. So parents, what do we do? Because these are our own blood. These are our own children. What do we do? I am going to suggest some don'ts and do's for you as a parent, if you have to keep saying. We start with the don'ts. Don't call yourself a failed parent. No, you're not failed. Don't blame yourself for the failures of your child. I have said that sometimes it is a brother and a sister or two brothers or two sisters who are in the same family and one is a successful child. The other one is this troublesome uh, 
vampire, I dare call them because when you are at the level of killing your mother, your father, you're nothing less than a vampire. This could be children who was, maybe one is 26 years, the other one is 28 years. The 26 year is violent, is this child we are talking about. The 28 year old is good and it's the same blood, same parent. Some of them are even twins. One going haywire and the other one very nice. So don't blame yourself as a parent. Don't doubt your parenting skills. And number three, do not become the enabler. Opening gates for this child at 2 a.m., bailing your child from police, wherever they are caught. Don't, don't, don't. Don't give all that your child asks for. The list can be address and you will be sucked to death. Don't sugarcoat your child's behavior. If you can say your son, your daughter has malaria or typhoid, it is the same way you should say that my son or my daughter smokes bangi. We can, we call this acceptance. And this acceptance, wherever you accept it, it is a pathway to psychological comfort and healing of this problem that is eating you up as a parent. And uh, some things are like pregnancy, my dear uh, colleague parent. When the pregnancy is inside the womb, it doesn't matter how big the clothing you put on will be because finally the pregnancy will show itself. Or a boil that is that, that has started, finally it will ripen and burst. So don't sugarcoat, accept that your son, your daughter is doing drugs, is being a, a, a troublesome child so that you start you are healing there. You find peace instead of always thinking of how are you going to sugarcoat it, to, to cover it, and it eats you up. The do's. Number one, delink yourself from your child. I keep telling us that we are singularly created. Love and treat yourself well. Number two. Number three, do not expect anything from your child because you will be disappointed. You can only hope that they're going to change. Remember, one time we said that the brain of a human being is totally formed by the time they are 25 years old. So these ones who are doing these funny things that we are talking about today are adults who have decided to do what they are doing. And therefore, you can only hope that one day, one time, they will change. Number four, do accept your parent, your limits, and ask for help. There is no shame in vulnerability. The help can come from the law enforcers, these are the police, to the chagrin of those near you. But it is preferred that the community loves at you or talks about you behind your back, and you get help. It's better when you know that your son is in, in a police station than knowing that your son has been killed by the mob, or you he has been killed by your own son, or that your son has killed his father, which is better. I would rather you know that the police are keeping your son safe. Set laws and boundaries and let your child know the consequences early enough, early enough. Don't wait until they are finished college and then you start telling them this, this should be done, this should not be done in, in your home. Be observant, number six, and nip it at the band. Change of behavior at teenage could easily grow into a vampire by the time they are 30 years. And that time, they are uncontrollable. Number seven, encourage your child to leave the cradle, to leave home when they should. There is this parental uh, hold onto our children that uh, we, we feel they'll not be safe out there. Who tells you they'll not be safe? 
if you yourself you are out of your parents home by the time you are 19 years what is it about letting a 25 year old go and do what the rest of the community is doing is uh, that is in terms of uh, searching for livelihood let them go out of your home so that they go out there and they are in the hands of the community where they know they must behave and finally i would urge us that we should refuse in word and deed that a child you bore just the other day because for a 52 year old 25 years is just the other day should rob you of your happiness hasten new to old age cataracts diseases drive you into depression and quick death refuse in word and deed act decisively and authoritatively and release the troublesome child to teacher experience to the world to teacher experience you have done your part this is an adult who is making decisions to hurt you to to depress you to disappoint you so release them to teacher experience who never tires you need your life dear parent the best you can do is if you have this kind of a child that we are talking about please plan for your sunset years and pray that your wayward child may get their hog pen or damascus moment sooner rather than later so that they get point and direction in their life the best you can do is pray for them don't don't let them build a whole castle of worries of stress in your head my dear friend my dear fellow mother my dear uh, father you will go and leave this child of yours selling what you think you have achieved left right and center that vehicle you treasure so much you will go and it is going to be knocked left right and center before we bury you so make sure that you are aware that you are singularly created and release a troublesome child so that you find peace and happiness in your own life we are singularly created and singularly answerable to our own happiness have I talked to you to someone? Please share this because parents are dying secretly because these things people don't want to talk about. It's it's not my son. It cannot be my son. It's it's not my daughter. It cannot be my daughter. And they are there suffering. They can't sleep. Headaches all the time. Backaches all the time. High blood pressure all the time. Let them go. They belong to the world you have done your part 25 26 27 28 29 30 years they are adults let teacher experience deal with them and they will learn meanwhile keep your sanity and keep your happiness bye bye and subscribe if you have not thank you very much